Hey there friends on YouTube, my name is Roger with Electronics and Gadgets. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. Hit the like and subscribe. If you've been here before, thank you. My next video is going to be on 5 iOS 14 settings that I feel should be turned off. Number 1. How to prevent Safari from preloading top hit on the iPhone or iPad. When you search or enter a word for an, in the unified bar in Safari on the iPhone or iPad, you should see a quote top hit. This is the first result of your search based on whatever search engine you've chosen. Safari has the capability to preload top hit results so that when you tap on it, the result link opens faster. Technically, this is a very useful feature when you're searching. A preloaded top hit website loads faster and quicker, and in many cases, this is very time saving. When you're looking for some information on movies, technical definitions, brand stores, and addresses, it can be very handy. But there's a price to pay for this little feature. Each time you search, whether or not you click on the top hit, it gets preloaded in the background. This means data gets eaten up. On an unlimited plan or on Wi-Fi, it's probably okay, but on a limited data plan, it can be bad. So we're going to turn this feature to off. So first, step one, open the settings app, tap on Safari, then turn off the switch that reads preload top hit. It's just as simple as that. It's not very often that you click the first Google result, but it depends. As for me, turning off preload top hit is definitely worth it. Within the smart search field, you'll also notice another switch labeled search suggestions. This works very similar to how Chrome's unified search bar suggests search keywords as you type a few letters or words. This is a handy tool and one that can assume that it takes up far less bandwidth than the preload feature. Number two, app location. Last year with iOS 13, Apple introduced a new setting that lets an app use your location data only once. With the introduction of iOS 14, the company has made a change to let you give out an approximate location to apps. Along with that, you can also check what apps have recently accessed your location at a glance. I'm going to show you how you can do both in just a few steps. To check what apps accessed your location, go to Settings, Privacy on your iPhone, tap on location services you can look at the icons next to the apps to determine if they have accessed your location recently or in the last 24 hours once you've seen how much permission apps have to your location data you may want to change it or give them approximate location data to do that tap on any app when you're in the on the location data screen you'll be able to see the level of permission and precise location toggle under the app and you can change that if you want. These are settings that give you more control over your data you share with apps and it makes it difficult for them to track you so you should give it a precise location only to an app that you trust. Number three, significant locations. Your iPhone knows where you are and it remembers where you have been. It keeps a record of your frequent hangouts, aka significant locations, and uses this data to make location-based suggestions using Siri and to power other features. Don't panic though, this data is kept on your phone, not collected by Apple. You might want to switch it off anyway though. Next, we'll see how to access your recent location's data, remove it, and switch it off altogether. How to find significant locations on your iPhone. Significant location settings are buried pretty deep. You'll find them in Settings, Privacy, Location Services, System Services, 
significant locations. You must authenticate yourself to see them using your passcode, touch ID, or face ID. Once you're in, you'll see a list of the towns and cities you have visited. Each one will have a number of sublocations and the date or date, date range of your visits. The city you live in will probably have the most entries, but you may be surprised at which other spots have been recorded. To view the locations on the map, just tap the name of a city. For some people, the significant locations data could be a fun way to see what they were up to in the past. For others, it could even prove useful helping to remember clients visit or track down an amazing restaurant you visit a few times while on vacation. Alternately, and in my opinion, the very existence of this kind of information in your iPhone is terrifying to you. Go take a look at what your iPhone has recorded and then make up your own mind. Number four, personalized Apple advertising. Apple enables personalized ads by default, and here's how to turn them off. Go to Settings, Privacy, scroll down and tap on Apple Advertising. Then just to disable the toggle next to the personalized ads. To be honest, I would trust Apple more than most other companies to ensure privacy while serving ads that better suit my interest. However, Things like this should always be opted in, in my opinion. Instead, Apple's personal ads are an opt-out feature, which means if you don't specifically turn it off, it's on by default. Number five and the last one is System Services. Access the System Services by opening Settings. From the Home screen, tap on Privacy, then Location Services, Scroll down and select System Services. I'm going to go over each one and what I feel I personally have set for each one. So the first one is Apple Pay Merchant Identification. This setting is tied to your Apple Card. Um, uh, there's no reason to have this enabled. I have it off. My Apple Card works fine with the setting off. Next one, Cell Network Search. This sends data to Apple to let Apple know which cell towers are being used. It's safe to turn it off. Compass calibration. This is specifically for the Compass app. If you use Google or Apple Maps, I recommend keeping it on. Device management. I keep, off, I keep this off per privacy reasons. The next one, emergency calls and SOS. I keep this off again. I can still call 911. Next one, find my iPhone. Keep this enabled in case you lose your iPhone. HomeKit. If you don't use HomeKit, you can freely disable this one. Location-based alerts. All, a tip, all location-based settings take a lot of battery power. I turn them all off. The next one, same, off. Next one, motion calibration and distance. Mostly used by fitness apps. It's safe to disable. If you find your fitness apps not functioning correctly, obviously you can turn it back on. Next is setting time zone. This setting automatically adjusts your time zone based on your location. If you disable it, you'll have to adjust it yourself when you arrive in a new time zone. I personally have mine disabled. Share my, un share my location. Unfortunately, people get lost if you have friends and need to share your location from time to time to make sure you find each other you need this enabled I have mine off next is system customization your iPhone will customize behavior based on your current location no thanks mine's off Wi-Fi calling Wi-Fi calling uses your Wi-Fi instead of your network provider to make calls some cell providers like T-Mobile and others support this. I use Wi-Fi calling, have this off, and it doesn't turn off my Wi-Fi calling. My Wi-Fi calling still works with this turned off. Significant locations, as Apple phrases it, quote, allow your phone to learn places significant to you in order to provide useful location. No, I have it off. iPhone analytics, off popular near me I have it off 
routing and traffic. Apple monitors your speed and location and uses that to inform the traffic level in Apple Maps. I have it off. And finally, status bar icon, yes. This will show the location icon in the status bar anytime your location is pinged and you can look to see what color it is and what happened. So those are my five settings that I would turn on and off. Thank you for being here. Please click like and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'm out.